So Andy, we're either right until we're wrong or we're wrong until we're right. And I couldn't decide which one to go with. I had a lot of deep thoughts about this. And I think, I think what, what, what did you end up going with right until we're wrong? Right until wrong. Yes. I, th I think you chose the right one because in our own minds, we think that we're right. Always. Right. We're never going to, we're never going to start off doing something that we think is stupid. We're going to choose the, the thing that we think is right. So we're right until we're wrong. Right. But we right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hello and welcome into to Sower Andrews here on the Sower Data Show. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Laird Dino on Sower. Joined once again by Andy Black, Black on Sower. Andy, what if we think we're right, but we're actually wrong? Then we're still right until we're wrong, I think. Is that unless like the Costanza? Unless like it's, it's like Sean alive, looking at it, it from, yeah, unless it's Sean looking at it from the right side and he's like, no, that's wrong. Moron. It depends. It all comes down to perspective. You know, like you're the good guy in the movie. You know, you think that you're the good guy in the movie. But then, you know, as people are watching the movie, they're like, no, you're the bad guy. Huh. OK. It's like, it's like a little Batman syndrome almost. Yeah. Like, you know, Vladimir Putin thinks he's the good guy in his own movie. Oh, hmm. Didn't know Maybe. we were going yeah. geopolitical. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. Toby says, I'm wrong until I get lucky, which I actually really like. Um, Toby, Liam, and Bob on the podium. Tuggy, not even here. In a meeting. One teardrop. Who schedules a meeting for them? Uh, Anion said, finally, I'm in time again for a live show. I was wondering, what do you guys think about monthly rewards for Division One? No. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm actually not kidding. I think monthly rewards are still a terrible idea. I know everybody wants them. Well, not everybody, because I don't. I don't, I just don't think they're necessary. Before I talk to anyone else, Andy, what do you think about monthly rewards? I think it, 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 uh, it presented a really big problem on the platform where, you know, like individual game week performances, uh, were not rewarded. Uh, I think we saw it a lot where people would pop off for one random week and then yeah. like not have a lineup for the next week or whatever. And, you know, you weren't, you weren't rewarding somebody for, for podium, you know, like getting a podium, uh, one time. And I think that like, that's bad. So wasn't the first time that they did that in all-star, didn't they do weekly rewards and the monthly? And then at the end they were like, uh Oh, <laughs> I think that's right. Card. Yeah. Which I think that's also bad too. Like they, they shouldn't do both, but maybe like podium rewards, um, plus the, the monthly or something, but also I'm fine them not doing it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm just so used to the, at least competing for a reward every game week that a monthly thing, I don't have the patience for that. I can't think yeah. that far ahead. Anyway, back to this. Sopsy says we're right until we're wrong. Then we buy more to make it right the next time, which actually might be exactly what I should have said. This was all about Simo. What's up? Mike Bastin. When were we right? I must have missed that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's fair. Nils, we're just not right yet. Yohanatin, Red or Dead 69, Aaron, so legendary. Scosmo, I'm always right. I mean, if there's somebody who could say that they're right a lot, it's Scosmo, Mr. Divisions himself. Mike said, I thought it was a stupid asking my partner, partner out when I first did. Turns out I was wrong. See, yeah, I mean, two wrongs, maybe, maybe one wrong can make a right. Hmm. Is that, I don't know. Daniel Shaforkel, novelty, what's up? Jonathan, do we need a progress bar? Oh. Haven't heard, we haven't hit that one on the bingo board in a while. It's been a while. We can bring that it's back been a, in a minute. Ben Johnson, what's up? Surface, hello. Here we go. Toby said, what about a monthly reward as an extra reward to incentivize playing your best lineup in Division One? I? I, I don't know, guys. All about monthly rewards from projecting lineups. Yeah, there you go. Do that. Uh, Anthony, hello. Little Jim Nance, hello, friends there. Um, <clears throat> so, Andy, I, I wanted to discuss this because this, the strategy idea that I talked about last Friday, 
And we've talked about it a little bit since then. And you think it's absolutely nuts, which it still might be. And when I was just about to say, like, I haven't really implemented it yet. I realized I did basically three steps towards it <laughs> literally this week. But when do we know it's a really bad idea? I'm trying to think of what you're doing that I think is absolutely nuts. Sorry, sorry. Let me read. So, and for Andy and everyone who isn't, my idea was essentially running the same line. Oh, yeah, yeah. Universities, that one. And your, your response was less that you thought the idea itself was bad, but more that the downside was just soul crushing. And you're like, I don't want that. And I don't think you're wrong on that part. But I also don't think that that necessarily makes it a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I sort of I do it in a few spots like I have guys in multiple scarcities, like especially my St. Louis City guys. Right. But um, I don't think I would only ever do that. What if what if my team plays on Friday and my entire weekend is cursed? Like, I don't need that in my life. I need I need a little hope, Laird. Little little hope for Sunday night, a late night Santos yeah, yeah. Laguna game where they're away to Monterey. But guess what? There's a little bit of hope that maybe the stars align and I get that nil-nil that I've I've been dreaming of. We all dream of, yeah. Yeah, I don't so I think that the the scope of a full so rare lineup. Uh that's not uh, how am I going to phrase this? Like, I think that if you ran the same lineup, like in contenders, let's say, like you always have challengers and that's different. You could have like all your challengers. So maybe challengers is Sunday night and you have that. Like, I think it's not necessarily just running like one lineup in one competition sure. in different scarcities. So there's still plenty of room to have lots of cards that will kill you later in the weekend as opposed to killing you. On <laughs> <Quantas>. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry. <laughs> that guy got me a reward this midweek, actually. So mm. how dare you? <laughs> Despite the number of lineups he's just mur murdered in my life. But the, yeah, like I, I appreciate that the downside is, is just, I think it's literally soul crushing. But if I did it, like at what point do I know it's it's a, it works or not? Like I, does one victory mean you, it works? Like I, bad strategies and and bad lineups work sometimes, and then those people think they're like, oh, this is what I should do: play five guys who are probably who are going to come off the bench and score goals. And you're just like, I don't think that's optimal. And they were like, I just won. So like, how do you know? It's like a really philosophical question that you just asked me there Laird and I think that uh the only like reasonable answer is like at the end of the season if you win more money than you spent but um uh I don't know that's a that's a tough one why is it even like why is it what about the single season makes that the time frame well you're are you even you're not even doing this in in season right no yeah, then it, I think that question's like completely unanswerable. So does that mean I have the safety? And Johanna just said, imagine having multiple Matsons this week. I have four of them here. Um, and he'll not play. Although Toby's right. He's back in training. Um, so if it's completely unanswerable, I can't be wrong. I guess, yeah. Like, I it was... Buying Santos Laguna cards was the most absurd thing, but um, uh, it doesn't matter because like all of the unanswerable variables uh, have definitely worked out for me. Like we we went through a boom, and those cards won things. Then um, we've since like went into a massive dip, um, and the cards are still probably worth what they were worth when I originally bought them. Mm. So like. Buy, buy Santos Laguna cards, yeah, plus EV. I mean, they were good when you first bought them. No, they lost. I mean, they they made it. 
the, so when I first bought them, they made the playoffs. They lost their first game in the playoffs, and then I didn't have utility for like three months. <laughs> in classic so rare fashion, they released those cards like yeah. the the week before the playoffs. Right. It's like these new Napoli cards. They're granted they've already had them licensed, but it's like they come out with five games of, or five or six or seven games of in season utility left. I I think you guys and it was uh, Surface who also brought, who was like, they have no utility. You guys are completely missing that they are significant collection boosters. Mm. Like you're not buying these cards for now. You're buying them for next season to dominate classic with your 16% cards. Okay. 15%. Gotta see the big picture guys. Come on. It's not just about in season cash. <clears throat> anyway. Ben said 5% collection stacking is the best strategy in my opinion. I'm never waiting for a score. My lineup is active for 90 minutes and then I know if it's good or not. Helps to have a better Sora life balance. Why would you want a life balance with Sora? This is life. Uh, I know a lot of people don't don't like what what Ben does, but I've got a few like full stack teams that I play and it's probably the most fun viewing experience watching five guys playing the same game. Haber said something similar recently. Yeah, uh, it makes it really, really fun to watch a game. Yeah, but there are 13,000 games a weekend. Why are you only limiting yourself to one? Well, that's why I got so many different teams, Laird. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. I'm 30 lineups or 25 lineups or whatever it is. How many lineups are you getting out recently? It's something like that. I don't know, 25 or 30 or something. I don't do a lot of the limited stuff. Uh, which maybe I should, I don't know. You can probably get in for pretty cheap now, but uh, especially you don't play your, you don't play your leftover rares in limited. I mean, I try to like, if, oh. but usually goalkeepers are an issue. And then it's also like the goal, they're the goalkeepers. I didn't play in any of my rare lineups. So they're usually pretty damn bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah definitely giving up three goals. And then it's like almost what's the point, but. Yeah, I, I will say that I have considered buying a bunch of limited goalkeepers, and it feels like back in the day when we needed more goalies for training. And mm -hmm. you're because like I have way more outfield cards that I don't want to that I am not using in my top twenty five lineups. That I'm like, oh, maybe they can win limited contender division five, and I don't have a goalie. Yeah, I definitely think goalkeeper is a position that I want to just continue accumulating more and more of um, just with the complete reliance on clean sheets or near reliance on clean sheets, just having more options uh, to play matchups yeah. is better. I yeah, used to be no, really I efficient because they're easy cards to sell, but yeah. just having an abundance is nice. Ben says he has 22 limited stacks on 4% or higher. <clears throat> That's insane. Feels, feels high. Feels high to me. Anyway, um, KB said, just a bad thing when you stack your favorite teams, then you're angry that your team lost and also that your lineups are dead, speaking from experience. Just don't stack your favorite team. Just stack another one. Maybe one out of Denmark. Who knows? Anyway, other than they become your favorite team. Like Daniel Copenhagen? Said, What's that? Copenhagen. I do. Ha I am working on a Copenhagen stack, actually. <laughs> Daniel said, team stacking and collections was a fun way to start playing so rare, but I'm now transitioning to any card that will help me compete. You know what's funny, Andy? So Daniel started with team stacking, apparently. A fun way to start playing so rare. If only there was some sort of free-to-play onboarding game that also encouraged stacking that then just rolled right over into so rare. Huh. Imagine if they thought of something like that. Anyway. Is, is that part of your part of your speech about how uh, rivals isn't for isn't for Sean? No, no, no. It's actually more that rivals is a significantly better onboarding tool than people give it credit for. Yeah, I, I, I actually I agree with you. Um, it like let's let's talk about this for a second. Yeah, fuck Sean. People people poo poo rivals as being an onboarding game because what are the reasons? Like it 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 doesn't actually 
it's it's not actually like the game. It's not pro. Um, you can't play people from multiple divisions uh, or teams. Um, it, it literally is not the game. It's a different game. But I, I think my biggest, the biggest reason I think that is it's a good onboarding tool is it gets people familiar with the matrix. It shows people what players are good in the game, like not just center forwards. You want the attacking midfielder, the defensive midfielder that takes sets. You learn those things playing rivals. Hopefully you can bring that into pro. Um, now, whether like Sawyer is marketing rivals in that way. I mean, at the beginning, it felt like they were pushing it towards us. Yeah. I guess it was to us to share with our friends. Yeah, I think they needed us to play it to make sure it worked. Yeah. Now, I think people who, like, if you only played rivals and in, like, Premier League match rivals, and you're like, yeah, I'll buy this card. Yeah, I'll buy this card to make my rivals lineup better. And all of a sudden, you have five. And they're like, hey, you can play these in Champions or in Premier League. And you're like, oh, cool. Let me try that. And you're buying Halland in no time. Anyway, Novelty said maybe this will be covered in another stream. But nah, we'll do it right now. But do you think the in-season comps pay too little? In-season comps seems to have crashed, such as Carlos Hill, Cucho, and Acosta in rare. Andy, I have a very simple reason why that's happened. Do you? Do you? Because Gil sucks and Cucho hasn't played. <laughs> Not where I was going, but <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> no, I I think the reason why these cards crashed is because the humongous hundred thousand it was it a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand MLS competition is over. Yeah. And that's so a big people, part. Also the first like mints are gonna sell for more because people are like playing pl it's like the advantage of having like the only although having a gill end season cards not a big advantage because he sucks but putting him into a uh <laughs> but like being the first one of the first people to be able to have him into a team is there's an advantage mm -hmm. there right yeah i mean the early mints were always more expensive and then when it was coupled with this gigantic opportunity to win way more cash than normal yep. people were paying to get those and then when that ended naturally people are going to want to get out of those cards I don't know about get out of those cards. Like I bought a bunch of uh, MLS end season cards to uh, play in those competitions, but I'm not getting out of them. I'm just, I, I'm not buying more though. That's fair. That's, and that's fair, a big part I, of it is there, uh, there's less buying pressure. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But I do think that there are people who spent early for MLS cards to play in the special weekly and are now selling those cards to play the K league and J league ones. Cause mm -hmm. like those are the biggest cash tournaments that we have yeah. in every scarcity. So I think it's just, it's what's going to happen from now on. Um, Charlie said rivals get slandered because a majority of the community can't make money from it. It's funny that is a majority of the community. Who, is anybody making money from it? But anyway, <laughs> rivals are great for what it is. Um, I think it's still not great for what it is. It, they, they can do more with it and they're just, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Nanzo said stacking is the new meta. It's probably the best way to play league specific competitions, especially at super rare and unique level, which seems like something Nanzo would say to get other people to do that so that he could not do it and then just beat them. No, that sounds like something Pranksy would do with like a Newcastle stack or something and, and just mop the floor with, with everyone else. That's probably right. You're right. Do we know it's the meta because he's doing it? Probably. Um, obviously <clears throat> said maybe MLS was a bad example as they're the cards I'm familiar with, but in season seems to have dropped across the board. Loot boxes seem more fun, et cetera, in comparison to just cash that I will give you. Boxes are fun. It, <laughs> How have we not talked about this? Boxes are fun. I refuse to talk about it until I want a card from one, but now that I have, we can talk about it. What, what card did you win? <laughs> I won two of them, one of which I've already sold. I won uh, Jung Sang Bin, the dude from Minnesota. And I don't even remember the other guy. The the two I won this week, one was a super rare. Hello. Uh, or were they both? <laughs> um, Excuse me. <laughs> well, hello there. No, one was, one wasn't. Oh, the other was a unique. I forgot. No, it was a... 
it was Marcel Beefus plays for Hamburg. No, he plays for Karlsruhe. Karl 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 the Marvins. Yes, the Marvins. Um, and then some Dino guy that plays in uh, Croatia that I'll, I don't think I'll ever be able to sell his card. Maybe I can. I <laughs> Isn't it great when you win a card and you are like, I will literally never be able to sell this card. Maybe not. I mean, he he does play a little bit, but he's missed like his last four games, I think. So I won something called Mimarel Benita. He's a 19-year-old defender from Excelsior, who I believe are about to get relegated. Nice. But the joy on your face when you saw that card icon pop up, you were like, let's go. And then disappointment. To be honest, I wasn't even really disappointed. Um, no. Because it was just better than another level up. Yeah. No, I was pumped. Yeah. And I was pumped. Yeah. Like, I saw the Sang Bin one, and I was like, cool. All right, why not? So we were List. we were talking, we talked before about them having more things available in the boxes. And our friend Scosmo had one of the greatest ideas I've ever heard yesterday. So for full disclosure, I was very close to sending that meme of like the I'm really sorry or I'm happy for you or I'm really sorry. I ain't reading that, but I'm happy for you or sorry about that. Yeah. Whatever it was. It, there were a lot of numbers, and I'm like, you don't even need to worry. To you don't even me. need to worry about a lot of numbers. Um, it, it's as simple as this: instead of winning a level up boost, you just win XP. So um, maybe you win. You can win a thousand XP. You can win ten thousand XP. You can win twenty thousand XP. Whatever you have, three, four, or five different tiers of XP that you can win, and it's just an XP boost. So if you apply a 500 XP boost to a level one card, he goes directly to level three. If you apply that to a level 19 card, you might just move him up a little bit. But uh, the, the cool thing about that is you could still cap it to three on a card. But I know that a lot of people wait until you, you got to wait till your 18 gets to 19 before yeah. you use the boost or you're being inefficient. But if it's just XP, then who cares when you use it? A quick aside here. Yeah. Should By the way, that is Tuggy's idea. It's a great idea. Which one was? The everything that I just said. That's literally Tuggy's idea. Not Tuggy's. Uh, I was gonna say, was Scosmo. it Scosmo? Sorry. God. Because I was gonna say the aside was, should Scosmo work for So Rare? I mean, he might at this point. He might already be working there. So <clears throat> when I read all of that, the the comment that I saw from somebody was like when would you ever use the small one? But I guess the small makes sense. Yeah. If you're on a lower level, because it could boost you like three levels. Right. Um, and, and the other cool thing that it does is you can get rid of the whole, I've got a rare boost, a super rare boost. You, you know how there's like three different or four different ones of those. It could, it would just be a number and it wouldn't matter which card you applied it to. Um, it's it seems more fun like yeah. it there's there's strategy to it as opposed to like let me just wait until level 16. and well, like i think the, there is strategy like, to the way that it is now it's wait the strategy is wait yes well it's well i think that they so other people have brought this up and i i think that so rare may think this as well but the whole like is the one and a half percent more you get now meaning the eight to nine and a half better to get that now as opposed to like waiting until it's level six, 17. And that's not fun strategy. Nobody, we don't want to do that. I, I did want to ask you, have you, so have you bought a card recently? Uh, not on the auction? Not on the auction? Yeah. Um, I bought pencil from someone a couple weeks ago. Did you, uh, was that pre-boxes? Right around, uh, no, post boxes. Does it doesn't even matter. Yeah. If you were to buy a card now, do you think you would look to see if it's been boosted or not? No, no way. Me neither. But but also like we probably should. Yeah. Because you're like, if you want to buy this card, you're like, oh, I'll boost it three times, and you look and you're like, 
it was already boosted from three to four to five. And you're just like, oh. yeah. I, I was realizing that the other day where I was just like, huh, I wonder if anyone's actually looking at that because maybe you'll need it. Jimmer wants to raise the max level to 40. <laughs> one of the worst ideas of all time. Do you know only one person on Splat? I was just about to say, yeah. Jimmer's got a <laughs> make holding great again. <laughs> No, I, <clears throat> I don't know. Ben said, I still feel like the boxes should have been 50% better luck next time. I do think that there should be a number there where it's just like, eh, go fuck. Yeah. <laughs> What's your go fuck percentage on this rare, rare luck? Yeah, just or a middle luck. finger pops out of the, out of the box. <laughs> do you think it just slowly kind of like lift? <laughs> Mike said another idea bandied around is you should use level ups on an in-season card to get a jump or to catch up on XP for in-season comps. I think it's hey, just what, a wait. Hey, what about a boost? Back. What about a boost that for one week it makes a classic card an in-season card? That's a fun idea. I'm in. Yeah, let's go. I think Come that's on. a really good idea. Put, a, put us on the team. Come on. And I guess we'll bring Skazmo along with us. The one who literally invented the division system. <laughs> Although I think M Pen did, M Pen had a little had a, uh, a similar idea, but yeah. Um, the yeah, I like that. Um, and I agree with cap the cards on X number of XP added instead of max. Cap the cards on X number of X. I don't know what that means. Cap the cards. I don't know. Pico's player said, I bought two Messies and realized both were max boosted up to two and a half percent. Sucks. Oh. I, <clears throat> that's a very, so I want to believe that the infrastructure is sort of in place for that because the MLB, you have the one week boosts already. Aren't they one week? One game week? What are, what are the one week boosts do? I think you get like a level boost for one week. Oh, yeah. Something. I, I don't know. I click the button when I have enough points. Right. Just get boost and submit. Yeah. No, I click. <laughs> well, if I have enough enough caps or whatever they are, then I'll boost one of my players. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's probably absurdly stupid, but it's probably adds a couple points, right? I don't know. I mean, probably not. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. I'm just randomly clicking here. Here, I'll show everybody. So this is what it looks like for MLB. So then when you go to submit your team, you can use coins to boost any of these cards. How, click one to see how what the percentage is. Uh, I don't actually want... You think there's a... a yeah, um, yeah, you can cancel out of it. So it's, is that 10%? <clears throat> Un, unclick Plus it. Five. What the hell does that mean? 5%? No way. Wow. 5% yeah. boost. Just for one week, though. For one week. Ben could have just told us, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I like that in season. That's a that's a that's a tricky one. Like yeah, tournament. especially for sorry data, right? Oh man! Imagine that. I don't know. Like, I don't think we'd ever be able to do it. Well, you could probably have like a. You could probably have like a token or something that you applied to a, a lineup and just say, "Hey, let this one." Or honestly, what you'd have to do is you'd have to have to let people submit a lineup that broke broke the rules. Which I think you already can in the lineup builder. So, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel's asking if you can boost everyone. Ben, oh, before I try it, yes, you can boost the whole team. No, you can only boost one player on the team, right? Or you can literally uh, go. Ben is saying I, you can boost everyone. Okay, that is crazy. Hold on. I always see. just assumed it was one. I've never boosted more than one. Player. Oh no, hold on. Yeah, it's just one. It's like taking it off. Yeah. Okay. That would have been crazy. Worried there for a moment. Yeah. We were going to have to sell up at an MLB for this ridiculous rule. 
how do you, how do you feel like MLB's going this season? Um, I don't. So I didn't buy any cards to play the champion like cash contests, and so it feels the same as last year. But I, I, it's a wonderfully passive game. It is, and lineups take no time at all. I'm not just like clicking. I'm putting in some time, but I do. It's a fun game. I almost never check my team during the game week, but I do stay up on it because my son checks it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the passiveness that you're talking about. It's more uh, casual mm -hmm. compared to uh, totally. basketball and, and especially soccer. But um, I, I honestly really enjoy it. I think the gameplay is set up correctly. I think basketball was probably – Basketball's weird because I like I thought I was gonna like it at first and I kind of did at first and then the more time that elapsed, the more I hated it. And I, this year I got to the point of just like I dreaded making lineups and I missed so many weeks where I just didn't I didn't want to do it and I just didn't. I skipped a few weeks accidentally for ML for uh, NBA. I think so. I like the NBA way more than baseball, but the, the game. So like um, DFS NBA basically so rare followed it that it's, it's totally a projection game mm -hmm. and it's, it's been solved. So if you have good projections, you just plug those guys in and that's it. And that there's just, it's just not fun. Yeah. And like, I have all the Villanova guys. I would love to like play them all in lineups. And I like put them in. I'm like, this has no chance. And there's really no mechanism, game mechanism to like make them have a chance. Is it, is it the fact that the NBA is not random enough? Like yes. When, when you look at, when you look at baseball, it's literally a random number generator. What happens? I mean, granted, you know, some players perform a little bit better than RNG, but like, yeah, most Except of no hitters. Like, it's it's like a sim. NBA. No, 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 no. Like baseball is like oh, a, it's a well, simulation with sure, yeah, yeah. It's just like lots of variants every every game week. Yes, the Benson. I know this is probably the wrong place to say, but I feel the efficiency of the sorry data lineup builder made it too easy. But like any any lineup builder with projections, like yeah, it's it's you. It's almost. There's very little nuance to it. And you can play around with it. Like guys who are projected, you know, if one guy's projected for 38 and one's projected for 37, like the outcomes are still quite vast, but it almost doesn't feel worth it to tinker much with the NBA. And so, yeah, it just feels like you, you should know right away in the game week how you'll finish because projections are just so, I don't want to call them accurate, but the projections, the NBA or basketball as a sport is significantly easier to project than baseball or football. And so, you know, you have one random guy who scores two goals and like everything changes or someone hits two home runs and you just don't get that in the NBA. And so, yeah, the game, it, it's not it's not a fault of, of this so rare NBA game. It's just like that's the way basketball is. And so... Yeah, baseball, mm -hmm. I find the base, like, so are MLB more fun while also being significantly less time consuming. Right. Yeah, it's a, like, I think so are NBA is a really good product. And the, and it, it has not made me watch baseball at all. You mean so are MLB is a good, MLB is a good product? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I, I think, I, th I think it's, like, granted, there's probably issues on whatever, the market and prices and whatever. Sure. But, like, from an actual game design and everything, um, it's pretty well done. Yeah, totally agree. And I think, I don't know if if I find so rare football to be so time-consuming that it's, like, a relief that I can play baseball casually and still be fairly competitive. Like, I... 
I do have like some decent cards, so I'm, I'm not playing with like horrific cards. And, and I bought a ton of cards in the first season and literally have not bought, bought cards since then. And maybe like, I am the leechiest of leeches when it comes to so rare MLB, which is maybe why I like it so I, why, but like. Nobody's uh, a leech. Nobody's a leech in MLB. I, but like we were talking like um, Fear My Turtle and Mike and McGee, like they, they're doing well and they, they bought new season cars and they're just like, yeah, I like this. I like it. So I'm playing it. And I, it doesn't feel like that many people play NBA because they're just like, I like this game. And it's fun. Right. like it, the NBA, you almost can do no, no lineup building before an hour before the deadline. And even then might not See, be enough time. And, and that's the, I think that's the biggest issue for me is a, a, I don't enjoy it, but B the lineup building needs to occur usually between five and 6 PM my time. Well, my, that's my commute. So it's yeah. like when I get home, I have to rush to do that. Well, when I get home, I want to see my family, see my kids, pet the dog. Yeah. Don't have time to like immediately go downstairs. I got to do my NBA lineups. It, it's the reason, like the same reason I, I never really got in this uh, NBA DFS is the reason why NBA, so rare NBA is so hard. Like for me, it's six to seven and it's like, I have dinner. I have my kids going places. Like, I don't want to be at a computer. Like that's like prime family out. time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, if you, if you miss something, you're dead. Like that's how it feels. And the reduction in reduction in scarcity, increase in scarcity, reduction in mints, increase yeah. in scarcity made the, the, the reward so less value, less rewarding. And it, the, the market credits, like I, I've just, they made me hate market credits because it was yeah. like, congratulations, here is something you can use to buy more cards, but only a little bit. Right. And it's like, all right. Like I did use them. I like, I bought some of the special edition, like they, I'm more likely to buy so rare NBA cards and not play the game because I just think it's cool to like own some of these like guys who I know and like, and mm. yeah, like I can play, I, I played a lot of the special competitions that they have. So for those who don't play so rare NBA, they have, they've had special competitions kind of throughout the season. They're basically special weeklies, but they require a couple new season cards and they had these like Christmas time, special edition cards and I bought a few of them from my favorite players and like those allowed me to play these new comps and yeah surface said NBA sucks because the most important variable for success is praying someone ahead of you ahead of your low level guy gets hurt that's how I've gotten half of my good finishes so <laughs> I actually it's, it's funny that he's like that's that part sucks because that's actually I think the best selling point for so rare NBA that your tier five could become like extremely valuable in two weeks, two months. Like th those, when you get tier fives in football, you're like, I am never using this card ever unless you're Jimmer. And wh what did uh, Tuggy call them the other day? Was it Tuggy? Bot food. Oh, bot food. Yeah, that's a good yeah, which, which is like, that needs to become like standard nomenclature. But like the... That doesn't happen in the NBA. Like I have, I won cards where I'm like, I've never heard of this guy. He's played three minutes his entire career. And then all of a sudden, and it's not like I'm, I think that's the benefit and problem with projections that like, I would have never played that guy until I go into the lineup builder. And it's like, oh, he has an L10 of six and he's projected for 39 tonight. And I'm like, okay, slap him in. Yeah. That's all. Victor said, I got an MLB TV subscription from so rare, which is fun. And I find watching your hitters super exciting. I think the gameplay diversity between football, MLB, and NBA make playing all tons of fun. Yeah, I, I agree. I just watching never your, watching your hitters is fun, but 
honestly, watching a starting pitcher go is is fun, and uh, especially if you uh, and relievers too. Like if you have a closer coming in, um, because it's worth so many points, and they only got to get three outs. It's that's another lots of fun little sweats in, in baseball. I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Like I said, look at Christian Brown last season. I I have a Christian Brown like that, or I think I did. I don't know if I still do. I don't know. Surfer's saying most of my good finishes have come with playing tier fours, fives with okay projection. Then after lock, someone ahead of them goes down and they go off. It's just dumb. And so I would I would make the argument that more times than not, those guys like that stuff is known before lock. Like maybe you found out about it after lock, but it's usually before. Not always though. But, it, but that's kind of the fun thing about NBA, that you can have, like, bad rewards can turn out to be, like, great. And it happens so rarely on in football and, and even MLB. Like, I feel like when you win a lower-tier guy, it's just, yeah. But, yeah, I think, I think the biggest problem that so rare MLB has is figuring out who – who to target to bring into play. And I had, I was actually going to do a show with two guys that play, that I worked with at Rotowire that are like hardcore fantasy baseball players. Like they, they go to Vegas for these like big money drafts and like they, they're really, really, really into it. Do they play DFS or do they play like year round uh, fantasy? Season long baseball. They, they do both, but it's okay. like, these these high money leagues are are season long, like weekly lineup ones, and it's I think that there's a there's a thought that like oh let's just go get those guys because this is fantasy baseball, and I think you could sell them on the idea of it, but people who've played the same fantasy baseball game for twenty years are not going to stop playing that and start playing something else, and or just why not add something else? Well, there. If you're if you're in your 40s and you've done something for 20 years, it's really hard to stop somebody from doing that to do something completely different. Hmm. Okay. I think that I think it hits so many different notes. Have you even talked have you talked to these guys about it at all? Yes. Yeah. And and what's their initial feedback? Like they get it. Like the concept is actually quite easy for like the, the easiest thing to do was not lead with, are you into crypto? And so once I was just like, like, I think so rare is somewhat, I don't want to say it's known in fantasy baseball circles, but there are enough people who like know what the idea is. Mm. And so they you're just watching, like, yeah, you, they must've been watching MLS games. And yeah, they, they were watching, the, right. They were watching the inner Miami Columbus. Yeah. And, and they got the MLB ads. It happened. Right. And to be honest, like so rare sponsors, like a ton of stuff on MLB network. They never say what it is actually. So one of the guys that I was going to talk to about on like stream with, um, we are good friends and we send each other Christmas cards every year. And he took a tour of the MLB network studio. And it, there was a picture on his Christmas card of he and his daughter like behind the desk, you know, people like do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. With a gigantic so rare logo, like on the desk. So I, so I see this and I'm like, wow, like there, it's working. And I was like, I said to him in text, and I was like, that's crazy. There's a so rare logo like on your Christmas card from MLB Network. You know what his response was? What the hell is that? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 that's great. But the, that's the worst thing. It's just this. Or, yeah. There's no so rare anywhere. So people just see it. But wait, so that's the logo um, that they have in the MLB office is a soccer ball? Uh, maybe this is an old one. Maybe, yeah, this, uh, maybe. That's the new, isn't that the new logo? No, the new one is more. Uh, more puckered? Yeah, no. This is the old logo. Sorry. Here, this is the. That's the new one, which also has nothing to do with baseball. Yeah. 
I mean, um, it, they still have a soccer ball underneath the baseball guy. <laughs> this, yeah, well, that, yeah, yeah, this one here, that's old. But anyway, so I like they get the idea of instead, like, because they do like auction leagues, and it's it's basically that, like, you pay to have that player on your team for a season, and so rare is like you buy that card. And now, granted, other people can have the card because of the scarcity thing, whatever. Right, but right. the concept of buy this card and he's your player until you don't want it anymore. And they're like, yeah, I, I totally get it. I'm like, what can you win? And it's like, more cards. And they're like, so I just entered, I more just spent cash. five. Right. Well, it, well, before this season, right. it was like, I usually spend five grand to try to win a hundred grand. If I spend five grand, it's so rare. Like, what do I get? And I'm like, more cards. And they're like, eh, yeah. can I? So, so maybe this year is different because of the there's more cash up for grabs. But I think I think they convincing those people to play fantasy baseball somewhere else is difficult. And so, if you can't really go after fantasy baseball, like existing fantasy baseball people, like who do you go after? And I feel like there's this idea that they could do it with, on the football side. You're like, no, 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 we're not going after FPL players. We're going after football fans. And you're just like, right. but fantasy sports is just different. Whereas like here, fantasy sports is very much a thing. But like, I don't know enough people who like love baseball and have loved baseball and never tried fantasy baseball and been like, now I'll try it. So that's the hardest thing, I think. <clears throat> we just talked about baseball for like 20 minutes. Uh, there was some NBA in there too. Is there anyone left? <laughs> Everybody left. They're like, uh, uh, Yannan just said enough of the sober so talk. Have you tried Halloumi yet? I have not. No, I, I just, I guess I need to see if I can get it at a local, local shop. Surely you can. Surely. What what um what's the origin of a halloumi? Like where is that from? Like, what like a Greek cheese? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was like a cow? I don't know. <laughs> um yeah, I think it's Greek. Is it okay? Um, hmm. Cyprus. That's Cy Greek. Say, yeah. Greek, right? Cypriot. Same thing. It's very close. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry to everybody who came for a regular sower Andrews and walked into a full so rare conversation. Um, KB said, I'm just, I just joined. So I'm fine. If you, if having this baseball talk, if you continue to talk for an hour, <laughs> the looking for food, I said, I tried to convince my mates who still play fantasy football from the newspapers that have been around for 30 years or so. Yeah. And Ben said, they got me while I was an FPL player. That's mm. funny. The concept of like got me. Like they just ripped him off the street. <laughs> You're so yeah. rare now. Did you did you play at any of the uh um what's the what was the Dia or uh DraftKings version of so rare? Uh Rainmakers. Rainmakers? Did you, did you do um, any of that? I, I couldn't. Like legally it, it was banned uh, in my state. So uh I don't funny funny story. I was playing a poker tournament, uh six months ago and I was sitting at a table with a guy that had a Rainmakers shirt on. I was like, Oh cool. You play Rainmakers. He's like, no, they sent this to me. <laughs> it's like, Oh, so right, then. <laughs> not only that, I do not play Rainmakers and I have two Rainmakers bags, two hats and two shirts. I have yeah, more Rainmakers yeah. stuff than so rare. Um, Interesting. So Interesting. It, it's funny because the concept of Rainmakers, like I get it, but, I have essentially given up on the NFL. Like I, my full-time job for years was revolved around the NFL. And the more, this is going to sound weird, the more football I did, more soccer I did, the less I paid attention to the NFL. And <clears throat> leaving Rotowire to go to Sora Data was like my, was like a final push off to the NFL. Like I'm done. And so then it was like, hey, Rainmakers, NFL. And I'm like, I was just really comfortable not paying attention to the NFL anymore. And so 
it was me not playing Rainmakers was more about the NFL than it was about Rainmakers. And the other options of like, like I was, I've never been into UFC. And so I don't see myself ever getting into it. So that's out. And golf, like, I get it, but I, I just, I'm not going to care enough. And so like, if they had sports I cared about, I would probably play. The irony of Rainmakers, like every time Rainmakers comes up, it reminds me of the show that Maxime and I did probably a year ago now when we were like, hey, this is what Rainmakers does. Sora might do this at some point where it's like, you have your in-season contest and old yeah. and everybody was like, you guys are nuts. Like you're totally wrong. They would never do that. Yeah. And you know, what's, what's crazy is it turns out they did it and they still made the classic competitions as good or better than the, the cash side. So um, they found probably a pretty good, pretty good balance there. I still think that there's things that they can do better, but I, I think the, the, the path, makes sense now yeah um of getting people yeah of not fully relying on new like you are an, an example of somebody who has been involved in so rare for years and are, continues to buy new cards um because of these competitions like if it didn't exist i don't think you would be buying them so, i wouldn't i probably wouldn't yeah. need you right um <clears throat> what uh I, I wanted to i wanted to ask you this earlier and it slipped my mind and now it's back do you think there is ever a possibility um, of of Sawyer getting licenses for NCAA in any way? Because the the reason is you get that four year turnover from a business perspective. I think it would be like bar none. It would be like the best thing that they ever did. You'd have players cycling in every couple years. So because of where they are and where those athletes are, I don't think DraftKings would ever let anyone outbid them for the that license. So like I would assume that Rainmakers gets a, a college basketball and college football license way before So Rare. And and I hate to put it this way, I think So Rare's success with MLB and NBA would make them be like, nah, we're not we're not doing that. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. It would be awesome though. Yeah, it would um, be. But again, like I think a majority of so rare users wouldn't care. Like a lot of people watching right now who are like really into football, if they were like, hey, we have college basketball, and they're just like, okay. <laughs> I yeah, don't like so rare um, media anyway. Yeah, I think it would open the door to huge new avenues. Um potentially. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it would be it would be really cool. I will say actually on the the Rainmakers so rare thing. For some reason, and maybe it's just the way that the the products were marketed, I've never considered Rainmaker cards collectible. Yeah. Um and, and, and it feels dumb because like so rare cards aren't really like collectible, but right. I did buy and, and may, again, maybe it's like an NFL thing that I just had no interest in, but like I, I have bought NBA, so rare NBA cards because of the player. And I'm just like, I want to own his card. And I literally never felt that in, in Rainmakers. And it felt like Rainmakers was like 100% a game that it, you just buy these cards to play in a contest, to win your cash and like move on. And I just don't, I just never th felt that way. Or I never felt the collectible side from DraftKings. As weird as it sounds, because like so rare collectibles, like we all laugh at the, the idea, but I have bought cards because I thought they were cool collectibles. Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons I asked is like with, with the NIL deals now, players could maybe yeah. get money back on percentages of their card sales or something. I don't know if that's possible. But, but also um, uh, minor league baseball, I don't know if there would ever be um, you would think that you would think that that partnership would already be there, but I guess it's it, it's not and may not ever happen. Um, yeah, get us Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I so think the NBA is next, right? Yeah, I think the biggest difficulty that they would have with college is just like there's no players' association and having to like deal with 300 schools 
or thousands of athletes well, and just I, yeah but i mean look like look at how uh ea sports dealt with uh ncaa did did you did you see that they gave every college athlete or every college football player five hundred dollars and a yeah. pair of shoes i think <laughs> it was yeah, something I, absurd like that yeah uh and i think it was an opt-in as well like they had to you had to opt into it of course yeah of course of course um mike said he just won a frank kaminsky rare shout out to a university of wisconsin yeah yeah just get the big 10. um daniel cooper said pranksy might pay more for a unique caitlin clark than her entire salary next season which <laughs> is probably true it is crazy uh I mean, she's gonna she's gonna do just fine. She's gonna make a ton of money on all of her endorsement deals yeah. and everything. But looking at her salary for the, the upcoming three years or whatever, it was just like, yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing? She probably made more last year at col in college. Yeah, for sure. I was particularly upset. This is going way off ta tangent here. Um, Villanova's best player last season right. is transferring to Iowa to basically take Caitlin Clark's spot. Because she's gone now. Anyway, um, Daniel said I should not be getting paid more than she is. That's madness. I mean, Daniel, maybe maybe you're very important at work. I don't know. Um, why did she not take the five million offer from that rapper? <laughs> <laughs> she might. Who knows? I don't think she specifically said no. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I like. Um, so f back to the, like the question, I don't think so rare would, I think so rares and I'll put, I said success before, but maybe lack of success. I think their experience with Sora NBA and Sora MLB would, would stop them from trying to go after more right now. Um, and sure. I don't think DraftKings would, would get over outbid on that. Mm -hmm. They would, they're prank seeing this one and just be like, nah, I'm winning that one. Yeah. So no WNBA for us. So, so like the, it's the same problem as the NBA game though. Like I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't play it. Would you play if they had like NWSL or uh, WSL? Like if they had women's soccer hmm. and women's football leagues like over the world, would you play if it was separate from the men? Probably. Like I totally would. Um, and I'm not like big into women's football. Like I, I, you know, I'll watch the national team and I like kind of know where everyone is. I think I more, totally more so to get my kids involved and interested. Um, less so. So I, you can I use your referral code in a couple of years. And <laughs> what's that? So you can use your referral code in a couple of years to get them signed up. Yeah. Yeah. Five, six years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I would totally be into it. Um, like, I'm much, I would, I would be much more interested in, what do they call it in, in, uh, in England? What's the women's league called? WSL came in my head, but I was like, there's no way they call it soccer. <clears throat> Anyone in chat knows, but like, I'm, I would be much more interested in following that. And I apologize to everyone who is going to be offended about this, but I'm following that before I'm waking up to watch the K league and J league. Like, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, I think NWSL has a, a, a pretty good opportunity there, there too, if they ever wanted to go after that. Super League. It's not a Super soccer. League. Yeah, it is a Super League. Um, Black is creating a self-sustaining economy with his kid. <laughs> of course. That's why we had to get rid of thresholds. Yeah, what do they call that? Generational wealth? <laughs> yeah <laughs> and their kids too oh that's right that... <laughs> because you were first do you get to use get the grandkids on your referral code or do you think <laughs> they get their kids signed up and they're like sorry i think so up. yeah i think that's how that works <laughs> generation <laughs> Uh, I think, I think I'm some friends in enough Sororize to follow any more products or sports. I don't think there's enough current users to support more products either. It's not about us. It's about new people. But yeah. that, that always seems to be the, the problem um, is bringing more 
people in versus more of the people that you have yeah. getting more. Like there's there's two different things there that we've always yeah, been right. kind of battling. Glenn says, in my firstborn son, I leave my sporting KC stack. Amelia will still be goalkeeper when I die. <laughs> well, Daniel said, it's finally league to Chelsea are good. And shout out Sam Kerr. The coach is leaving, though, isn't she? She's coming over, over here. She coming back? I thought she was coming to the U.S. Women's National Team. Sam Kerr? No, 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 no. I was like, the Chelsea coach. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I don't think it works that way, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it works exactly that way, though. It doesn't really matter where you're born. I think she's played enough for... Uh, probably. Was yeah. down under guys would be really pissed if we tried to pull yeah. that one off. <clears throat> Server said they haven't shown any ability to massively bring in new users quickly in years. They need their current user base to support any new endeavors, at least initially. So I totally agree with you. But... There are many more existing users, I think, that would be interested in women's football than NBA. The disrespect to Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, come on. Surface. Good point. Surface. That's a good point. Um, Cutco knives don't keep getting money from the ambassadors. Uh, anyway. KB's looking for esports. Hmm. Shout out to League of Legends. I kept you going, kept you going through the pandemic, didn't it? Literally, it yeah. Um, Surface is right. We need to find the next Gary B. Who is the next Gary B? It's hmm. Pranksy. Ooh, Pranksy is everything we wanted Gary V to be. <laughs> He's spending right. loads of money on this site. He's out there tweeting about how great it is. Hey, use my referral. Look at all this money I want. You can win too. I mean, that's what we wanted Gary V to do. And yeah. instead he was like, hey, let's go um, Mumbape and let me buy this Jow Feel. And then he just disappeared. Yeah. The problem is, is, is you know, Gary V's got like 10 million followers and Pranksy's got like 200,000 or something. But I, I bet more people have used Pranksy's referral code than Gary V's. And I bet it's really? I bet it's not oh, referral code, people. yeah. But how many people came to the platform because of each person? Not necessarily referral codes. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Dan Cooper's right. We need Elon to get involved. He could be the next Gary V. Yep. He could say that he's gonna allow you to display your silver cards on your Tesla dashboard and people are going nuts. Rikamon saying, how much do we think Gary V got from Sora? Isn't he an invest, like an early investor in Sora? Yeah, I think he was part of one of the, the invest investment groups. Yeah, like one of the early ones. Like Alexis his... was, was in one of the groups too. What is his manager name? Which is the Serena oh, Williams uh, connection, by the way. This is Gary V's. <laughs> so yeah, absurd. Right. Now, the fiat price he paid on these, where is that in relation to what those cards are worth now? Um, well, let's see. Mbappe, 9, 17, uh, 18, I'll give it. Why did he get this one for 3,000? Anyway, 20 grand, 21 grand for the mess, for the Mbappe rares which are now worth six grand not yeah. even five grand jeff felix yeah took a little haircut on us. Jeff he's he's in this for the long term though you know give it another yeah, that's a good 10 point. or 20 good years <laughs> hey i think in 20 years he can finally sell, sell that jeff felix and buy the jets that's his goal, right? Gary V's it goal is. Yeah. is to buy the Jets. So, how about Zora letting Gary V win the Jao Felix unique? Where is the ambition? Anyway, that is a good point, G Gary V. So, how about this? <clears throat> 
if you totaled the amount of money spent on SoRare from people who found it because of Gary V, would that be more than the amount of money Pranksy has spent? Yes. Okay. All right. There's a lot of boomers out there. Ben Johnson said, me and Gary V won the same amount this midweek. <laughs> hmm. Did Gary V have fun though? No. He was just making uh, angry armadillos and yeah. whatever. They're stuffed animals now, I think. They are, yeah. He's gone all in on that stuff. Yeah. Um, David Alvarez said, Drake missed the Wemby unique card. I remember early on, I don't even know if they had started Sober NBA yet. Like it had launched. Maybe it was. Maybe they had gone. But I remember there was a whole thing of like, what happens to so rare cards if someone like Drake was the example? Like, what if Drake came in and bought the whatever? Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, like he, Drake was so rare NBA's uh, Gary V. Hope. And um, so Drake, let's, Drake. let's actually talk about that for a second. Um, what would happen? Uh, it would create a massive amount of money coming onto the platform. There'd be a huge boom and then probably a huge crash with lots of unhappy people. Um, lots of exit liquidity for people. <laughs> uh, probably wouldn't be. I mean, it, it, it would be good in the short term, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like Ben said, he'd sell at the peak. I mean, that'd be what a lot of people would be trying to do. Like, I'll be honest, if there was a huge, if Drake came on the platform and millions of people came on, I would, tr I would be looking to exit out of a lot of cards. Remember when we were all going to exit out when they brought the Prem on? Yeah. Yeah. It, looking back at that, the whole like when Prem and everyone was like, that's when we'll boom. And the number of people were like, that's when we'll be rich. And it was like, are you going to sell? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. But like our cards will be worth more. Yeah. David said, who cares? We are still in here after the crash. I mean, yeah. Was there a crash? <clears throat> Andy, what do you think about this Wemby Top Shot thing? The Wemby Top Shot unique going for more than the so rare unique and that they did a uh, Dutch auction on it. Blind Dutch auction. I thought it was a blind duck. Dutch auction, excuse me. Was it just blind bidding? What's a blind? All right, I need explanations here. So I know Dutch auction is it starts at X number and then it de declines until yeah. somebody bids and wins it. Um, what's, a, a, what's blind Dutch blind Dutch auction? I don't. I don't think it's a blind Dutch auction. I think it's a blind auction or a Dutch auction. What? So a blind auction. A, a is blind like is like everybody just submits their bids without okay. knowing what everybody else is. So like when I go to a trivia night, that's a blind auction. If I you... bid on a basket. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's a very American thing. I like uh, people overseas may not get that. I, I'm actually kind of curious if, if people know what that is. But... Sorry, I'm trying to send a message to my friend Mike Zakarian here who uh, would know. Yeah, server said it was, he thought it was just a blind bid, so you don't see the others. It was $150,000 was this Wemby moment, which, Andy, I learned after seeing this Wemby moment that it's not a moment at all. It's literally just a Wemby highlight reel from his first game. But it's like highlights of all this stuff. There's some video, cool video stuff in his entrance. So it's not actually a like single moment, which apparently they've been doing. Um, Mike said he believes it was a blind auction. Hmm. Did we find out the bids after that? I don't know. That, that, that whole platform is still weird to me. I'm, I'm shocked that it still exists. Uh, um, and that, that's not me like uh, knocking it in any way. It's just um, I'm, I'm legitimately surprised that that many people are still like engaged with it and interested and I guess it's good that it's doing well. I guess so well. I don't know. Maybe it's not uh, doing well in it. So well is well is very no, yeah. it's not what's happening. Um, right. the they have introduced like a fantasy game part 
actually, I don't know if Top Shot did it themselves or whoever the hell. What's the main company? Um, Dapper. I don't Dapper, know if Dapper yeah. does it, but they have like a daily. It's almost like a prop. So it's like today's. Um, you need to get if you have moments of five players and they have to get thirty-eight rebounds, and then if they get more, you win. Some, I don't even know what you win, but hmm. um, yeah, I'm a I'm full fledged noob when it comes to Top Shot. Noob actually implies that I have any interest in it. I have no <laughs> no idea. Right. Yeah, but I do know that this moment, which was considered unique, and actually I don't even know if it could be considered a moment since it was like a bunch of things. I don't it's know a multi moment. It. I don't know what they called it. Yeah. Um, but this Wemby unique went for more than the so rare unique. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're dead. We're not back. That's for sure. We are not back. Nope. Top shot's back. We're not. So it's funny. So <laughs> when I asked Mike, like I was talking to Mike. So Mike Zakarian's over at Team Hole. They do it, used to do a ton of top shot stuff. And I was like, I literally said that. I was like, so Top Shot's back. And he was like, no, 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 no. But this is cool. I was yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Um, ZM Star said, you, Laird, you just explaining that sounds like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I may not have, I may not have described it accurately. He did. Um. <laughs> I haven't seen it though. So I'm just assuming he did. Yeah. I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, but there's there continues to be like nothing, and this is going to sound somewhat offensive. There's nothing about Top Shot that makes me want to be a part of it. Hmm. Yeah. Agreed. So I don't. So I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So looking back in retrospect, are you happy with the title of today's show? Uh, sorry, I had to take a quick second to even remember what it was. Um, yes. You, yes. Think it, you think it did, did this discussion justice? I think the discussion we had in the first 20 minutes, it was just, yes, justice. 20 minutes. Justice. Was it, 20 was minutes. it that long? Oh, I felt like we talked for, uh, about an hour Five about minutes. basketball and, top oh, oh, oh. and NBA yeah. um, and women's sports. Maybe. I think so. I've gotten some feedback recently about this show. I tend to get more on the positive. Like there were many more people who were like, no, no, no. Oh, before I go into that, <laughs> I'm at the bus stop the other day with my daughter and this humongous bird that I've never seen before. Oh, flies yeah. by. Here we go. And I was like, I need to, like it flew away too far. Like I couldn't get a great picture, but I wanted to be like, <laughs> I literally looked down and I was like, that's a cool bird. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally Andy Black here. Hey, Andy, cool and bird. that's that really is imagine. that's the normal human reaction. Hey, that's a cool bird. Look. Yeah, that's that cool. was it. That, yeah, that's fine. That is yeah. a fine reaction. You know what it was? It was like dark gray and it landed on somebody's roof. And so it like blended into the, and I just like couldn't get a pic. I was so angry. I couldn't get a picture. And here's, here's the difference between a bird nerd and what you just did. A bird nerd says, oh, look at that interesting quail. Let me snap a picture. And they take a picture and then they upload it onto their phone app that saves all their bird pictures. And yeah, then yeah. I automatically identifies it for them. I would never. KB said, I have that reaction when I see cows or horses. <laughs> I will say that once you have kids, you start doing that. When I mean, you're just like, hey, horse. Yeah. For no reason. I mean, yeah, for no reason. Anyway, um, what were we talking about before that? This show, whether it was good. Oh, the feedback I've gotten. Mm. So the number of people. So there was a comment on the video from last week. That was like, I kept fast forwarding to get out of the bird conversation and I, and I got to the end and I'm just like, yeah, sorry. Like that happened. I didn't say That's kind of a deal, man. But I read that and I was like, yeah, that's just kind of what happens. But then the other comments are just like, this is my favorite bird. I had, have you guys seen this? And like, so that's a give and take on this show. But I will say, I think this entire show was actual until this conversation was about so rare. It was. Yeah. yeah. Little bird doc, just a little bird doc. ZM Star said, with bald eagles where I live and I get jazzed every time I see one. I would too. 
just gets completely jacked, just jacked up when he sees a bald eagle. Yeah. It's like, let's go. You. <laughs> Should um, I got to share that picture. Hold on. Uh, oh, Gator guy bought Messi. Hold on. So we were talking about this with Gator guy as well. And when we were talking about so rare, so birds, is that what we called it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Here we go. So the, uh, the California condors at his local zoo. That actually sounds like something Gary B would create for B friends, a California condor. Oh, man. that's exactly. Yeah. The biggest flying birds in the world. Oh, actually. Uh, I'm not even going to get into that right now. It's not nor the time, not the time nor the place. But where is this picture? Here we go. Um, sorry for those who are just sitting here waiting for me to do this. Uh, oh, is it not going to work? Hold on. Oh, all right. Here we go. So we were talking about KB. Would you buy this NFT? The one of one bald eagle, red, white, and blue. This what is the position, future. Of what position does he play? Attack. <laughs> the, uh, the red, white, and blue feathers kind of right. even better, don't they? Right. So the a nice summary of this show right here are the four tabs I have open on this shared screen. Gary V, FC, Server Data, this Eagle picture, and Halloumi. Oh, that covered it all. Eagle is a defender because it defends our freedoms. It's pretty good. It's that pretty is good. pretty good. America. Anyway, shout out to Gator Guy who uh, works some AI magic on this. Man, that is a bad He literally thing. typed four words into Chat GPT and got that. So uh it might have been like six words, but he had to know what words to use. Yeah. That's all. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Thank you to everybody for joining. Surely you can like the stream at this point. If you're 77 minutes in and you haven't liked it, shame on you. But yeah, join us next week for more bird talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come back for more bird talk at some point. We'll get there. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody. Shout out to Quinny. Forgot that part. And um, I'd buy a shoe shoe bill bird NFT for sure. That thing is menacing. I would buy a shoe bill bird. What is that? I'll look it up after this. Yeah, we will. Yeah, stay tuned. Come back next week to find out what a shoe bill bird is. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for coming, and we'll see you around.